On Boris Johnson's first day as Prime Minister in 2019, he pledged to fix the crisis in social care once and for all with a clear plan we have prepared. Since then, he's done his absolute best to deal with the social care crisis, mainly because by mishandling the pandemic, he's killed as many old people as possible. <laughs> that man was more lethal than a cold snap or a handleless bath. <laughs> In an interview with Laura Koonsberg, Dominic Cummings claimed that Johnson wanted to keep his weekly meeting with the Queen going even after Covid had started taking hold in the UK. When we first heard that, I imagine we all thought, wow, meeting a 93-year-old woman during a pandemic that's mainly killing older people seems stupid. But now we have to ask the question, was Boris Johnson trying to kill the Queen? <laughs> a woman who, let's remember, in many ways is the ultimate pensioner receiving social care. <laughs> I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. Is that illegal to ask a question? Did Johnson say, listen, I've crunched the numbers and if we can waste this fossil, we can pay for all the other oldies and get HS3 and 4? <laughs> On Tuesday, Johnson announced his plans to pay for social care and deal with the NHS backlog by raising national insurance contributions. Measures which were voted through the House 319 votes to 248 last night. The measures are estimated to net about £12 billion a year. Now, national insurance is only paid by working people. So this change in many ways means working people are going to be paying for older people and in some cases some much wealthier older people to keep their houses. And we're going to be focusing on older people as in his speech Johnson barely mentioned disabled people who also use social care. And I can only assume this is because he thought the Paralympics had given them all far too much airtime. <laughs> now, before you say, oh, of course you're against this niche, surprise, surprise, anti-old people material from the chocolate Lenin and his left-wing potato <laughs> shop. <laughs> Let me be absolutely clear. Everyone thought this was a bad idea. The Guardian, the Mirror, the Telegraph and the Mail have all published criticisms of it. The papers haven't been in this much agreement since the invention of Sudoku. <laughs> so why would Johnson pursue such a policy? Because it's deeply popular with that key group of Tory voters, the rich and the elderly, which, granted, sounds like a remake of The Fast and the Furious set on a saga cruise. <laughs> In the 2019 general election, 62% of voters aged 65 and above voted Conservative. An analysis of the result showed that the Tories owed their large majority to support from retired voters. As long as older voters continue to turn out, the government can basically say, we love screwing young people. Now, I should quickly unpack the phrase, we love screwing young people, <laughs> because the last thing I want to be on the receiving end of is the dreaded Emily Maitlis death stare. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the picture of it is making me nervous. <laughs> Maitlis, I never said it. I was at a Pizza Express. I can't sweat because of war. <laughs> Bear in mind, the definition of young people that are being screwed by this government now extends to anyone of working age. They're young in the same way Jude Law was young in The Young Pope, i.e., I mean, look at the man. <laughs> Not young at all, but in the context of Popes, he's basically just got his first pube. <laughs> he's young, he's just not young, young. Like, he's not young enough to be, say, molested by one of his colleagues. <laughs> and no, what, what are you ooing? We all watch Spotlight. <laughs> no one is saying there isn't a problem in social care, there are many. By the end of the year, care home operators have suggested they could have 170,000 vacancies in the UK as people leave the profession for better pay working in Amazon warehouses. I guess if you're going to have to change nappies at work, they may as well be your own. <laughs> and look, nobody is denying that social care needs funding. But to that, I will ask the exact same questions NHS 111 asked me when I saw blood. How much and where is it coming from? <laughs> the first question is easy. How much? Shitloads. We need shitloads of money. And as for the second one, it's got to come from people who can afford it. But instead, the government is raising national insurance, a regressive tax that disproportionately affects the working poor, who are also about to lose the 20 quid a week universal credit uplift. But you can't expect this government to sympathise with that, because for them, a 20 quid uplift is something you do with a rolled-up note in a Westminster toilet. <laughs> Even The Telegraph described this as raiding workers to pay for retirees and warned it would accentuate generational divides. Well, it's finally happened. 
Me and the Telegraph agree. <laughs> and I'm sure that the Telegraph would have been thrilled to know that were it not for the fact that they described this show as essentially unwatchable. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I know that pensioner poverty is a real problem, but according to the Office for National Statistics, 22% of households where the main householder is over 65 have a household total wealth of £1 million or more. Taxing assets and wealth would have been a fairer way of doing this. Listen, it's simple. Either you take the money from Scrooge McDuck or you take the money from Donald Duck. And the government has looked at Scrooge in his money pool with his bespoke money swimming costume and he's gone, <laughs> well, he needs those coins for swimming. <laughs> What's he supposed to swim in? The bloody air? <laughs> These are the only two options for swimming, coins or air. No, let's get this money off his nephew Donald. You know, the one who can't afford trousers and pants. <laughs> and what about Huey, Dewey and Louie, a.k.a. the three little freeloaders? Let's get them out of school and riding an Uber Eats bike. <laughs> And what makes this even worse is that over the last 18 months, a lot of people of working age have put their lives on hold. Many of them worked on the front lines throughout the pandemic, and it was done in large part to protect the older generation. But now, a tax hike specifically on people who have to work for a living to avoid touching the asset wealth of the richest generation in British history is incredibly unfair. Basically, for 18 months, even the youngest in our society were told, stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Now, well-off older people in our society are being told, stay home, isn't your home nice, fuck everyone else. 